Hi, it's Jane here. I'm here to lead you through a gentle yoga practice. So we will need blocks for this practice, but if you don't have blocks at home, one thing that I found works pretty well is a couple of mason jars. So this will just give you a little bit of lift up under your hands when you're in a lunging position. Um, sometimes if we're flat on the palms, we'll be really rounded forward in the chest. And it's possible that all you need is just to come up onto the fingertips here. But if you don't have the flexibility to be down in your lunge um, and your hips are up, then you'll still feel rounded. So just grab a little something. You could also use books would be pretty good for this too. Um, and we're also gonna be in that half Hanuman shape. So, you know, this is, this is a lot on your hands. Um, but it'll be less if you're up. So and pause this and grab something. Um, and then when you're ready to go, we'll start laying down on our back. So we'll just start by hugging the knees into the chest. Take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. Just feel your back resting down into the ground. And see if you can feel your breath inflating into your back, into the floor underneath you. And we'll take a few more deep breaths like that. your breath go wide into the sides of the ribs and the waist. Okay, and then we'll just start to loosen up the hips with frog circles. So your knees are going to be going in two opposite directions. Knees come together and then into the chest, apart, and then forward away from the chest. Just feeling your hips starting to gently open. And then bringing both knees together and over to the floor on the right side for a spinal twist. Bring your arms out to the sides like airplane wings. And initially, you'll probably have your left shoulder blade pretty far up away from the ground. You want your legs resting all the way down on the ground. And then that left hand is gonna to start to make back strokes. So you're gonna roll over onto your right side, palms come together, and then back stroke and open back out into that twist. And you'll continue like that. Exhaling as you roll onto your side, palms together. And inhaling, chest comes to turn towards the sky. And that left arm coming out to the left. Now, you don't need to trace perfect circles with your hand. Your elbow might be a little bent. You really want to find a soft movement here. This is about releasing resistance. Just letting the head naturally rock side to side. Moving in and out of the spinal twist with the breath. Not forcing anything, just Soothing movement. Do one more of those, and the next time that your left arm goes out to the left, we'll hang out there a little longer in that spinal twist. Start to look over to your left hand. Breathing here. Notice if that left shoulder blade has come a bit closer to the floor. We'll roll back to center and take the knees now over to the left side, side two. And again, initially that right shoulder blade might be quite a bit lifted. I'd rather, for this exercise, you have the legs all the way down on the floor and the shoulder blade up, rather than having the shoulder blade down and the knees up. I want your lower body to be the stable part. And now the upper body will move 
Open into your spinal twist, right arm to the right. And then rolling onto your left side, palms come together. Moving with your breath. Letting this movement be soft and gentle. It doesn't need to be your biggest spinal twist ever. And if there's any trouble in the shoulders at all, just allow the movement to be less of a circle and more of a kind of a wobbly ellipse. Just whatever your arm wants to do as we loosen the upper body. And then the next time that right arm goes out to the right, we'll turn to look at that right hand and we'll stay there for a little longer in our spinal twist. Letting that right shoulder blade melt a little bit closer to the ground now. All right, let's roll back to center. And then placing the palms on the floor just beside your hips, we'll raise the legs up towards the ceiling. And if you're tight in the hamstrings, you're gonna need to bend the knees. But we do want the feet to be up over the hips rather than forward. So getting those legs more or less vertical We'll circle the ankles a couple times, circle the other direction. Okay, and then we're gonna start bicycling the legs. So as if you're riding a bike, this big pedaling motion, let it be a little bit slow and exaggerated, so it's bigger than a normal bicycle would be. And we're going for hamstring stretch here, so you're reaching out through the flexed foot reaching out through the heel and extending the knee until you feel the back of the leg starting to open. This is also a really nice way to get some good circulation in the knee joints. Notice if your knees are pointing out to the sides and do your best to bring them parallel. Okay, and then we're gonna bicycle a little bit further away from our head. So now instead of going for a hamstring stretch, we're going for core strength. So nice and slow, controlled movement. Again, knees parallel rather than turned out. And the further forward and down that straight leg goes, the more you'll feel that in the hips. It might be a little intense in the hip flexors, but we're just gonna do a couple more. Feeling our center there at the belly. And then next time you've got your right knee in, let's hold around the front of the right knee with the hands and let that left heel stretch forward away from your head. We want to keep that bottom leg really active, so the knee is all the way straight, and that kneecap should point up at the ceiling rather than out to the side. And this is an inner spiral of the thigh. For many of us, naturally the knees kind of splay out. So this might feel like you're bringing your inner thigh a little bit closer to the ground. And then you can just kind of shake that right knee side to side a little. We're just trying to loosen into that right hip crease. Deep inside the right hip, you're just kind of folded rather than squeezing. And switching sides, take your left knee into the chest, interlacing your hands around the front of that knee, and then reach forward through the right heel. Really feel that you're reaching long through the inner ankle. And again, that inner thigh is turned a bit down towards the floor, just enough so that the kneecap points up at the sky and keeping that right leg long, draw the left knee in and just see if you can relax deep inside the left hip crease rather than squeezing. So you're just pulling it in with the arms. You can shake side to side, soothing your hip. Nice. All right, and then we'll roll over to one side and we're gonna make our way up to hands and knees. So we're going to set up on all fours, the wrists directly underneath the shoulders and the knees directly underneath the hips. Now it's important whenever you bear weight in your hands that the fingers are spread wide and that whole handprint 
is pressing down into the ground. So this is going to help to support your wrists, elbows, and shoulders. Okay, and then cat cow. Tuck your toes under, draw the chest forward, nice wide collarbones for cow. And then as you exhale, tops of the feet come to the floor, press into those handprints, and gaze towards your belly button. Deep inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat back. Tops of the feet press, gaze to the navel. Inhaling, stretch the toes. The next day's long here. And exhaling, cat back. Continue with your own breath. Finding that rhythm. So you're exhaling the whole way into your cat back. Inhaling the whole way into your cow. Warming up all the muscles along the spine. And then coming back to your neutral spine, we're going to take our right foot back, ball of the foot on the floor, and just press into your hands, leaning back into the heel to stretch through the calf muscle. Try to keep the shoulders away from the ears and float the base of the skull towards the ceiling a little bit so your neck is neutral. And then switching sides, taking the other foot back, toes tucked, you're pressing back through the heel, trying to feel that stretch through your calf. Good. And then gently release and we'll sit back to child's pose. Walk your hands forward, just starting to open up into the shoulders a little bit, in the armpit area. If your shoulders bother you at all, try to turn your armpits in towards your chest a little more so the inner part of your shoulder widens away from your neck slightly. And then keeping that, press into your handprint and tuck the toes, press back to downward dog. So you may need to keep a little bit of bend in your knees, but you're sweeping your tail up and back. Press forward into those handprints, lengthen from hands to hips. And still turning armpits in. Neck is relaxed. Slightly bend one knee, reach the opposite heel towards the ground. And then switching sides, bending one knee, reaching the other. Again, switch. Arms stay strong, switch one more time. Okay, and then walk your feet up towards your hands. If you need to shake the wrists, wiggle the fingers. Just roll the wrists. All right, and then making your way to stand. So bend your knees, push down into your feet and come up to standing. Sweep the arms out and up over the head. Inhale there. And with your exhale, hands come down into the center of the heart. Okay, so this is where we're going to want to find those props, blocks, or block substitutes. And they're going to be just on either side of your feet towards the front of your mat. So starting again in mountain pose, Pressing the soles of the feet into the ground, tailbone dropping down, belly drawing slightly in and up. And taking the arms out and up overhead. Inhale, exhaling, fold. And you can bend your knees enough so that hands come to the prop. Step your right foot back. Inhale there, chest is up. And then exhale, step the back foot forward and fold in. A little bend in the knees. Inhale, come up to standing, sweep arms up. Hands to heart center. You're gonna alternate sides, just like that. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward, bend in the knees, hands to props. Inhale, the left leg goes back, lift your chest. Exhale, back foot steps back in, fold. And bend the knees, rise to stand. Inhale up. Exhale. So it's a very long breath, so you have enough time to do each movement. Long, deep inhale. 
exhale, fold. Right foot back, inhale. Exhale, back foot steps in, fold on your exhale. Inhale, rising. Hands to heart, exhale. And back to back, left side, inhale, open. Exhale and fold. Left foot back, so it's a big one, step back, chest up. And exhale, fold. Inhale, rise to stand. Hands to heart. Take another breath right here. Just notice the elevated heart rate. Notice the energy moving through your body a little bit differently. Right, and then again, we'll flow. Arms overhead on the inhale. Exhaling, fold forward. Now again, the right foot steps back, but this time we're gonna let that back knee come down. I'm on carpeting here. If you have a hard floor, you might need to fold the edge of your mat over, kind of double it up, or get a towel or a blanket if that knee is bothering you at all. Okay, and then shift your hips down and forward enough so that you feel that stretch through the front of the hip quite a lot. And that front knee is directly over the ankle. So if you find that your knee is going past your ankle, then scoot the front foot forward, walk the back knee back lengthening out that stride and bringing shoulder blades down the back so breathe in take your chest up okay. and then walking the hands and the props back so they're behind that front ankle we're going to begin to slowly straighten and bend that front leg you don't need to straighten the leg all the way just come to where you feel the hamstring stretching and we'll inhale on the way forward, exhale on the way back. The taller your prop is, the less of a forward fold you'll be in. So depending on what you're using, you might need to come up also onto your fingertips to add a little bit more lift. Just making it work however you can. And the next time you straighten that front leg, we'll hang out there just a little longer. Again, the knee might be quite bent, but let's try to straighten our back. Sweep the tail back, lift the chest, flex that front foot, opening the hamstring. Take one more breath. And then release. So we'll shift forward, walk the props forward, and use them to help you step that back foot in. All right, bend the knees, rise to standing. Inhale, open hands to the heart. We'll go down for that second side, arms overhead, and exhale folding. Left foot reaches back and let that back knee come down. All right, so shifting hips down and forward. We're trying to stretch through the front of the left hip flexor. Finding enough lift under your hands here that you can bring the shoulder blades down the back Chest is up, neck is long. You can check out that front knee over the ankle. You can always walk the back knee back. And one more breath. Okay, now walk the blocks back behind the front heel so that they're more or less under your shoulders as you rock forward and back moving the legs toward the front leg towards straight and then rebending it. I like to inhale on the way forward and exhale into that forward fold. You want your knee to flow straight forward and straight back. And then extending the front leg <clears throat> and try to find some length through your spine, sweeping the tail back behind you, lift up the heart. And then gently release. So walk your blocks forward, step the back foot in, hold on your exhale. Bend the knees a little bit, rising up to stand, sweeping up, 
Now and exhale, hands to heart. Let's continue to flow here. Arms overhead. Whoa, forward. The right foot goes back again. Back knee comes down. And this time, let's bring our hands up onto the hips. So we want the front of the pelvis, the hip points, to face straight forward. We find a little bit of lower abdominal engagement. And then bringing the arms forward and up overhead, palms face each other. Drop the shoulder blades, lift the heart up, inhale. And exhale, hands come to the blocks. Step your back foot forward. Again, we'll take that half sun salute. Press into the legs, rise up, inhale. Hands to heart, exhale. Second side, sweeping up. Folding forward, exhale. Left foot stretches back. Back knee comes down. Hands to hips. Find the square pelvis. So hips point straight forward. And then using your abdominals, feel those hip points lift. Your lower belly is strong. We'll sweep the arms forward and up. Palms facing each other. Breathing here. Maybe you can take the thumbs back a little bit. Heart lifted. And then with your next exhale, take the hands back down. Step your back foot forward. Folding in. Bend the knees. Rise up. Inhale. And hands to heart. All right. So now we can loose the blocks or the props. And if you did have a blanket set down as a knee cushion, you'll want to clear that out of the way now because this next flow takes us all the way down onto our belly. Okay, starting at the top of your mat, we'll start in the same way that we've been doing. Arms come up overhead. And then fold. Bend the knees a lot, enough so that you can take the hands to the ground and step both feet back, finding a plank. Hold there for a moment, wide chest. And then release the knees down and come all the way to your belly. So now we'll point the toes back, tops of the feet on the floor. And remember that inner spiral of the thighs? We're gonna try to press the pinky toes towards the ground a little. Okay, so the inseams will lift towards the ceiling slightly. And it might feel like you're sticking your butt out, so keep the thighs rolling in, but then take your tail towards your heels. Okay, and then Bring your elbows in by your sides, lift to cobra, inhale, exhale, lower back down. So keep the legs strong, tailbone reaching to heels, just curling the heart forward and up, inhale, exhale, lower. We'll do two more. We roll those shoulders back and down. Try to take your shoulders away from your ears and down. Last one here, inhale. Okay, and then go back to your child's pose. Hips to heels, stretching the arms out long overhead. Find the breath in the back of the waist again, that lower back area. One more deep breath there. And then pressing back to your downward dog. So tuck the toes, press back. Notice if it's a little easier to lift your tailbone up now that we've warmed up and stretched the legs. And then walk your feet up to your hands. Bend the knees and come to stand. Inhale up and hands to the heart. Okay, so now let's take our wide stance and we're gonna come into a warrior two. So I'll mirror you. So I'll call this my left leg. I'm gonna turn the left toes in and then turn the whole right leg so that your kneecap and your toes point towards the short edge of your mat. You have heel to arch alignment as if you're on a balance beam. Okay, and then we'll bring the arms up to shoulder height. Now, we're going to do a little bit of flow here in the pose. 
So move to straighten that right leg and then bend the right leg. Back and forth like that a few more times. And just notice what that knee is doing. You wanna to try to point the knee straight over the toes. So it's a big turnout from that right hip. Okay, and release the hands to the hips. Okay, so now we want to heel toe that left foot in so that you have a bit of a shorter stance, about your own leg's length between your feet. And we'll take triangle pose, so you might want to use your prop again on the pinky toe side of your ankle. We'll just bump the hips back to the left and reach out over your right leg taking your hand onto your shin or perhaps onto that prop. And then feel again how you're trying to turn this right hip. You're wrapping the hip underneath you okay, so that then your whole torso can stack open. And maybe you'd like to bring your left arm up towards the ceiling. Relax your neck, try to bring your shoulders away from your ears and then if your neck bothers you at all, you can always look down at the floor, but if it feels okay, the classic variation is to look straight up at the top thumb. Navel to spine, nice and strong here, lengthening out through the limbs, and then really strong through your legs as you rise up and release the hands to the hips. We'll switch sides. We'll do that same two exercises on the other side, so if you used a prop can have it ready for you over on that left side. Widening out your stance and coming into your warrior two. So in the warrior two, you're down in a lunge, knee over ankle. So that might mean, you know, you're here, or it might mean that your left thigh comes closer to parallel with the ground. You can get quite low if you'd like. Just keep the knee over the ankle. And then arms to shoulder height. And we'll start to just straighten and bend the left. What we're really going for is to stay in the outer spiral of the thigh, even as we bend and straighten. And keep breathing. You can either inhale on the way up or down. It doesn't matter so much, but just make sure you're not holding your breath. And then heel toe that right foot in so that you're in that equilateral triangle. And then bump your hips back to the right. I'm trying to bring that left seat underneath you, so outer spiral. Reach out and take hand either onto the shin or onto your prop on the pinky side of the ankle. Feel free to stay here with the hand on the hip. Or as you stack the torso open, you might like to take that top arm up. Shoulders away from the ears so that there's a lift in the heart, but keep your core strong, navel drawing gently into the spine. Gaze is either at the floor or up at the top thumb or to the side, just making sure the neck is long wherever you're looking. And then pressing into the feet, rising back up and take the hands back to the hips. Good. You can heel toe your feet together or step the feet together. And we'll take a standing side bend here. So you want to have your feet so that they're pointing straight forward. Here again we go for that slight inner spiral of the thighs and then lift the belly, drop the tail. And we'll bring the arms up over the head and clasp the left wrist with your right hand and we'll come up and over. So pressing down into both feet. Come on back up and release your hands by your sides. We'll go to the second side, sweeping up. Clasp the right wrist in your left hand and come up and over. Make sure your navel is drawing slightly in and up. The tailbone drops. Pressing into both feet. Good. And then 
gently release. Okay, so now I'd like to take you into a breath exercise, one of my favorites, called Breath of Joy. And this one involves some swinging, some up and down movement. So if you tend to get dizzy, you want to be careful with this one. Go a little slow and definitely give yourself permission to pause if you feel a little bit lightheaded. But ideally, this exercise gives us a really kind of uplifting, um, even a little bit of a euphoric state, so I love it. It involves this swinging of the arms, forward and up over the head, and then out to the sides. Okay, and we'll also have a kind of a supple bouncing in the legs. So you might take the feet about hip width, still parallel. Take your hands to your belly and just see if you can get easy in the legs and the knees. Just bounce, bounce, bounce. Okay. All right. So let's try to put it together. I'll show you from the side here. So a little bend in the knees and we inhale arms forward and up over the head. Okay, a little bend in the knees. Inhale again, arms out. Okay, and then back up overhead, last inhale. And then bend the knees and fold. This is an exhale through the mouth. You bend the knees, sweep up overhead. I'm showing you slow, slow motion. And then it'll be another inhale like that. Third inhale up and then fold. Now as you do that forward fold, notice how there's a kind of a bend in the knees, bounce, and then bend again, bounce. And this is going to allow you to stay strong in your core and not bend over at the waist, but just tip from your pelvis. So it's quick and it's three little sips of air and then a big exhale through the mouth. All right, so here we go. We'll put it all together. Navel is gently drawn to the spine, so you kind of stay centered. Let the arms just swing freely. A few more. Last one. So we're going to turn the palms to face each other. Take a long deep breath. Tailbone dropping down. Relax the shoulders down the back. Navel to spine. And release. Hands down by your sides. You bring the hands to the heart. Close the eyes for a moment. Just observe the energy in your body. And this energy that we've stirred up inside. Just allow it to serve you in the best way. So like you could drink it in to every cell. the eyes open. All right, we'll, still, we'll take one balancing pose. So really trying to gather up all of that kind of sparkling energy and make it a little more earthy. So we're gonna stand on the left foot, turn the right knee out, and take tree. So the foot either comes below the knee at the calf, or if you can, bring it to the inner thigh. And we hug in, squeeze in between the leg and the foot. Okay, tailbone dropping, belly drawn in. Push down into your standing foot. Hands of the heart. And it's helpful to rest your eyes on something still. Hugging in. If you'd like, you can bring the arms up to that V shape again. And we'll release hands to hips and foot to the floor. Great. If you need to circle the ankle or give it a little shake, feel free. And then making your way to the right side. 
Stand on your right foot, turn the left knee out, avoid the knee, so come either below the knee at the calf or above the knee at the inner thigh, and then hugging in. That hugging in is really key. We need the foot to press into the leg and the leg to press back into the foot. Dropping the tail, belly drawing gently in and up. Growing roots down through that standing leg. Breath is flowing, steady. And if you'd like, arms up overhead, arms facing each other. And then hands to the hips and foot knees to the floor. Okay. Let's have a seat. So if sitting up straight uh, is difficult with your legs stretched out long, um, you might want to lift your hips up on a blanket or a pillow. Just give yourself a little bit of a bolster there and then you'll be able to sit with a straight spine more easily. We're going to draw the right knee, the right foot into the inner left thigh here, just that same shape as the tree pose, and then turning the chest towards the straight leg. Lift up tall, inhale, and then tipping forward from the hips. Okay, and you wanna have a fairly long spine here rather than rounding. So keep chest up, shoulders down the back. One more breath here. Draw both hips back. Reach out through the top of the head. Inhale. And fold in on your exhale. Stay nice and low. And back up. Switch sides. So the right leg reaches out long. Left leg folds in. Straight leg is active. Flex the foot from the quad. Turn towards that straight leg. Get long through the spine. Inhale and fold, exhale. Shoulders down the back, neck is free. Draw both hips back, reach out through the heart, inhale. Folding in, exhale. And then come on back upright. We're going to come back to that first side. So your left leg is long, right leg is folded in. And now we're going to take this knee down and plant the hand on the outside of the knee. Okay, and then that left foot's going to come to the floor. Hips rise up off the ground and press the hips forward. Just little turns like this. Press down into that bottom arm, lift the chest. Now, we'll come back to the second side, but for the moment, we're gonna bring that right foot up and over the left thigh, and then turn and twist, hugging the right knee with the left elbow. Just a gentle wringing out of the belly. And come on, back to face forward, let's switch. The right leg long, the left leg folded. Inhale to stargazer, so pelvis lifts. Tailbone reaches towards the heel. Press into your bottom hand, big breath in, lifting the heart. And then release, and sweep that bent leg up and over. And then hugging around the left knee with the right elbow. And this opposite arm comes behind to help you lift up tall. Turn with your exhale. Take a deep breath here. Let's come to a comfortable seated position. And now we're gonna take a pranayama or a breath exercise called Nadi Shodhana Kriya. 
closer to you. So it'll involve a, a hand mudra. So we've got the pinky and ring finger long and then the middle and index folded. Thumb. And we're using the thumb and the ring finger to alternately block the nostrils. And you don't really need to press them at all, a very light pressure is plenty. And so the idea is that you're inhaling through one side and exhaling through the other. Okay, and then you stay on that side to inhale and exhale back out the first side. Okay, so I'm not gonna mirror you on this one. I'm using my right hand and you should too. We'll start blocking the left nostril with the pinky or the ring. Okay, inhale right. Switch the hands, so you're blocking right, exhale left. Inhale left. Switch, exhale right. Inhale right. Switch, exhale left. Inhale left. Switch, exhale right. Last round, inhale right. Switch, exhale left. Inhale left. Switch, exhale right. And just resting your hands in your lap, breathing normally. Keep the eyes closed and just observe a sense of balance in your body. Breathing into both lungs. Both collarbones stretching out wide. Both sits bones rooting down into the earth. Feel free if you'd like to pause the video and stay in a seated meditation for a few minutes. When you're ready, we'll lay down on our back for a shavasana and just completely relax everything. So, lay down. And we'll turn your palms to face up. Take a moment to snuggle your shoulder blades in under your back. If you're more comfortable with your knees bent, then I recommend just resting your knees in on one another so that they can support each other and there's no effort in your hips. Once you're comfortable here, we'll begin our body scan. Bringing kind attention throughout the body, inviting any tension to melt away. So start with your face, relaxing around your eyes and forehead. Releasing through the temples, cheeks, and jaw. Relaxing around the whole head, ears. Root of the tongue. Relaxing down through the neck, melting, letting go through the shoulders. Letting the length 
of your arms rest without any effort. Soften the palms and fingertips. And then relaxing across your chest. And your upper back. And the space inside the heart. There's room for care. Give yourself that kind attention. Relaxing what you can and tensions, any little tangles that you notice, just giving them kindness, letting them float, sort of surrounding them with softness. Attention down into your belly. Just let your whole abdomen relax. Release through the sides of the waist and into the lower back. Relax your legs, softening around the knees, down the lower leg, ankles and feet, softening the soles of the feet. Now, feeling the whole body all at once. This entire field of sensations, full of your own kindness. Feel free if you have the time to stay here a little longer. And when you're ready, you just start to deepen the breath. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Roll over onto one side and gently make your way up to seated. Thank you for practicing with me. Be well. Namaste.